Let's look at the all-important growth forecast, first of all. And uh, we have forecast growth of 2.5% in 2015. And then it falls off to 2.3%, and then another 2.3% in 2017, uh, staying stable around that area in 2018 at 2.3%, and then uh, a slight uh, increase to 2.4% in 2019. So those were the growth forecasts. Let's have a look at the borrowing forecasts. If we have a look at 2014-15, standing at £90.2 billion, dropping in 2015-16 to £75.3 billion, a further drop in 2016-17 to £39.4 billion, and then £12.8 billion in 2017-18. The change comes in the final two years of the next parliament, in which the Conservatives had said if they were in government, they would be trying to create a much bigger surplus than the figures today. So if you look at 2018-19, it's now £5.2 billion in surplus, aiming for £7 billion surplus in 2019 2020, far lower than George Osborne had originally indicated. And we'll look at the implications of that uh, in a while. We'll be talking to, to Robert and James here in the studio. The economic forecasts, unemployment rate fall to 5.3% this year. Debt forecast, this is something the Chancellor underlined several times, uh, to be 80.2% uh, of GDP, that is, in 2015-16, falling to 71.6% of GDP in 2019-20. Um, and inflation predicted to be still very low, 0.2% this year. The tax changes trailed a personal allowance to be increased to £10,800 in 2016-17 and then increasing again, said George Osborne, to £11,000 in 2017-18. A higher rate threshold to rise to £43,300 by 2017-18. That was first talked about by the Prime Minister at the Conservative Conference and annual tax returns to be replaced by individual online tax accounts. Let's look at uh, pensions and savings then, because uh, we did have some changes there which are potentially quite controversial. Um, more pension reforms allowing existing pensioners now to cash in their annuities. And I think we'll have quite a debate on this as to whether they've got the protection, really, not to be ripped off in some circumstances. So uh, that'll be part of that debate. A cut in the lifetime allowance from 1.25 million to 1 million. That was something that Labour had been calling for, and that will have implications too for some of Labour's own spending plans. Uh, the new personal savings allowance to take 95% of taxpayers out of savings tax. That was something that the Chancellor said was um, would be a great help to millions of savers, though, of course, with interest rates where they are, uh, people aren't getting that much income on their savings. And then uh, there'll be a new help to buy ISA, that's, uh, that's where government will put money in to ISAs on top of um, people's savings in order to help first-time buyers. Now, what about some of the measures that were targeted at business? Well, the small business rate relief to be doubled for a further year to March 2016. And Greater Manchester to keep 100% of additional business rates, all part of George Osborne's push for devolution and the Conservatives' northern strategy, and a commitment to introduce ultra-fast broadband. And then if we look at some of the other measures too, which came up uh, during the speech, which was uh, about an hour long from Mr Osborne, plans for a, a £1 billion tidal lagoon in Swansea Bay to generate green electricity. Um, that's not a definite go-ahead. That is a kind of... Uh, investigating the the possibilities, I think, but Mr. Osborne uh, mentioned that seven billion pounds for transport investment uh, in the southwest of England, and uh, a new twenty five million pound fund for. Uh, armed forces veterans. And then of course the duties. Well, one that will bring a cheer no doubt to those in the pub. Beer duty cut by one pence. Cider and spirit duty cut by two percent. Wine duty will be frozen and fuel duty frozen. Uh, George Osborne certainly has felt the campaigning of his colleague and parliamentary private secretary on that one.